what are the best settings for this monitor? Now, by best settings, I mean the settings which I used as my test settings in the review, and I've used these because they fit my preferences, they work on my unit, and they work according to the targets which I go for within reason in my reviews. So remember that you will have your own individual preferences and individual units differ. So if these don't work for you, then feel free to make your own adjustments. The first thing is the preset itself. That is found in picture. The most flexible ones, custom one, custom two, and custom three. Standard is a little bit less flexible because it grays out six axis color. I'm sorry if this isn't clear in the video. The way they've done this is really blended, and actually it would be one of my complaints about this menu system, is it isn't as clear visually as it could have been. But standard is otherwise very similar to the custom ones if you set things up in the same way. I will quickly just go through the other presets. We'll just show you them. So there's FPS. This makes various different adjustments. It has a bright look to the image. It has a low gamma look, so it gives you lifted detail for dark shades, which can give you a competitive edge but you can make manual adjustments which will achieve that kind of thing as well with the other presets. It just basically sets this up to different things by default. So you see the gamma is actually set to 1.8, so as I was saying, low gamma lifts up the shades, makes a lot of those darker shades brighter than they should be, for example. And it sets the colour temperature to cool, that's just what it does. don't know if that's advantageous in any way, but it's just what it does. RTS RPG, significantly warmer look to the image, I can see that straight away makes other adjustments. Brightness is set to 90 by default, for example. Contrast is raised slightly for no apparent reason. Gamma set to 2.0. You get the idea. That's really what these presets do. They just set things to different values and you can change them and it will remember it for that preset. So if you want to customize them, you can do that. Reader setting is a low blue light setting of sorts. So it has a moderate brightness, slightly reduced contrast, slightly reduced color vibrance. Low blue light set to 5, which is a moderate level. sRGB, that is its own little preset. This is the sRGB emulation setting of the monitor, which clamps the gamut closer to sRGB. That's all explored in the review. You might want to use this if you do want to use an sRGB gamut clamp and you want to have things more as the developers intend within the sRGB color space, which most content is really designed for, and you don't want extra vibrancy and extra saturation, then you can have this used as your main preset. That's fine. It is explored fully in the written review, but you can see that you can adjust the brightness, which is nice, but you can't really adjust anything else. So, for example, you can't change the colour channels and you can't change the gamma setting. So, custom 1, that's what I'm using, but you can, of course, set the other presets, such as custom 2, custom 3, or standard up in much the same way as I'm going to be showing you here. So, what did I actually change? Well, the brightness, I reduced that to 30, and that got close to my 160 nit target which I go for in my reviews. That's just what I've always gone for and I go for that for consistency. It works in most of the lighting conditions that I go for but this is something you would adjust according to your own preferences and lighting conditions. Contrast I left that at 50 which is the default. I left a lot of this at the default really. I did change colour temperature so yes gamma is also default 2.2. Colour temperature use it to find 100. Green was at 99. Blue was at 100. Be careful when you're adjusting these. This didn't actually get 6,500k on my unit, which I would usually go for for my test settings. The reason for that is that on my unit at least, and this could well apply more broadly with the M27U, the precision with these adjustments really isn't very good. So if I reduced the blue channel just 1 to 99, it actually dropped my colour temperature about 300k, which is a massive change for just a single point adjustment with the colour channel. And it also affects the green balance. and I could rebalance everything. I could get 6,500k and a good neutral green channel as well, but that would involve massive adjustments which would greatly affect the contrast. So I actually just settled for 100, 99 and 100. Again, it depends on your unit uh, as to what will be optimal here. And there was, you know, a slight grey neutrality issue, a little bit of green to some greys, but it wasn't extreme. If it was extreme, I probably would have made further adjustments, like I said would be ideal, but that does, again, have an effect on contrast. The other setting to be aware of, well, there were a few, but the ones that I actually changed. So there's overdrive. I can't actually remember what that was set to by default. I think it might have actually been set to picture quality, but this would be what I would recommend in general if you're spending a lot of time, particularly at high refresh rates, but some people will find picture quality just fine for any refresh rate. But if you're spending a lot of time at low refresh rates, around 60 hertz, for example, then 
You might find setting this to off is preferable just because it will reduce your overshoot, but it depends on your overshoot sensitivity. And some people might prefer the balance setting, which gives stronger overshoot. You might not prefer this at 60 hertz necessarily, but at higher refresh rates, if you can tolerate a bit of overshoot and you want to speed the pixel transitions up just a little bit compared to picture quality, then the balance setting might suit. They're all explored in the review. AMD FreeSync Premium Pro, that is your adaptive sync toggle. So if you want to use NVIDIA's G-Sync compatible mode, you also have to have this enabled. If you want to use FreeSync, you have to have this enabled as well. But basically any VRR technology which relies on adaptive sync, you need to have this enabled. So I've shown you so far an adjustment I made to brightness, to the color channels, the overdrive setting I used, and AMD FreeSync Premium Pro being on in the OSD. The other thing I did was I set DP refresh rate to 160 hertz rather than the default of 150 hertz. Now this 10 hertz difference, it really makes very little difference in practice. It's not something I'd worry about if for whatever reason your system doesn't run the 160 hertz, then I would just accept the 150 hertz, which may work if 160 doesn't. So that's why they set it to 150 by default. It did actually say there, if you notice flickering or flashing or some issues with 160 hertz, just use 150 hertz. What I would say though, is when I first activated 160 hertz, I did get some screen blanking, so the screen went off for a while, then it sprung back to life, or it briefly went off and sprung back to life. I got around this by simply reactivating NVIDIA G-Sync compatible mode in NVIDIA control panel, and I unselected enabled G-Sync, G-Sync compatible, pressed apply, and then checked that checkbox again so it was enabled, pressed apply, and that got rid of the issue for me. You might find that you need to toggle AMD FreeSync Premium Pro in the OSD if, if toggling it in the graphics driver doesn't work for you. And then that might just fix it up for you and 160 hertz might just work fine. But if it's still giving you issues with screen blanking, just select 150 hertz. If you're using HDMI, then you are limited to 150 hertz maximum, even if you're using HDMI 2.1. I'm just going to enable HDR because the settings are very different under HDR. I didn't actually change anything under HDR. I left things as they were, except that I did ensure overdrive was set to picture quality and it may be depending on the preset you're using anyway. And yes, I enabled adaptive sync, so AMD FreeSync Premium Pro was enabled. I prefer to use that versus not using it, and you can use that at the same time as HDR, that's not a problem. You'll see there are three different HDR presets. These are exactly the same if you configure them in the same way. The reason they've got three of them is because there are some settings which you can customize, dark enhance, color enhance, light enhance, local dimming, uh, sorry that's, that's all there is, um, and then the reset picture which will just reset this to the factory defaults. So if you want three different sets of settings for different games or different application types you can do that. I'm not really fussed about that or indeed these settings, but I will just briefly show you what they do. I'm just going to load up a game under HDR because it will give you a better visual representation of what these settings do. So I've got Shadow of the Tomb Raider running under HDR now. If you do like a sharpness filter, by the way, you can up the super resolution setting. I'm not fussed about that. I leave that disabled. Just worth mentioning, because I know some people do like a bit of extra sharpness under HDR and some monitors do that anyway. So that's how you can control that if you wish. So the first thing I'm going to go through is local dimming. I would recommend setting this to high. The monitor doesn't have a lot of dimming zones, it only has eight dimming zones running as vertical bands across the screen from left to right, but it still does give a perceived edge and contrast, and I do talk about this more in the review. If you have this set to high, then it gives you the strongest effect. It's most likely that the dimming zones will actually dim, so it gives you the strongest effect, really. But you can have a play with this if you want a gentle effect. Some people for consistency, they may just prefer having that set to off because again, there are only eight dimming zones, so it's only going to do so much anyway. And in some scenes, it could be potentially annoying. So set that according to your own preferences. Mine is to have this set to high. Dark Enhance. This basically gives a very flooded look to things. You should be able to see that in the video, but it also gives more detail. So I can see more of the dark areas there, for example. So this kind of gives you a competitive edge. To me, this sort of detracts from the atmospheric look under HDR. Not that this monitor is particularly good in that respect anyway, but it's even worse with Dark Enhance enabled. There's Color Enhance. 
and this gives a bit of a saturation boost. It isn't a strong or extreme saturation boost, so you can have it set just a little bit, a little bit more, or the strongest effect. But even with the strongest effect, level 3, I wouldn't say it's a huge boost, but definitely there is some oversaturation now. That gold looks sort of overdone. The reds there are a bit overdone as well. It doesn't do the same thing as a sort of digital saturation enhancement would, where it pulls shades closer to the edge of the gamut without expanding the gamut itself. Anyway, I'm witching on a bit here, but basically if you want to use that setting, you can. I was just trying to say it has a little bit more of a subtle effect than you might expect in places. Light Enhance. You can see that really just brightens up the image. It doesn't change how bright the monitor will actually go. It's really a big gamma shift of sorts. It just makes things overly bright, over brightened. And that also gives you an uplift to those darker shades. And it doesn't really give the same flooded look to the image, although it over brightens things. It does maintain good depth, so it's a bit more selective in that respect. And I would prefer it to using Dark Enhance if you want that visibility enhancement. And then there's Reset Picture, and that's really all there is under HDR, and all there is in general for the best settings of the monitor.